Hi, my name is David, and today we're going to learn about an exciting new technology, Apollo Server for GraphQL. So this is the backend that will allow us to use GraphQL, and we're going to use the version 4 of Apollo Server. We're going to walk through the documentation together to learn more about it and how to set it up. So we're on the Apollo GraphQL docs Apollo Server, and we'll scroll down to getting started. In this tutorial, we're going to learn about GraphQL principles, how to define a GraphQL schema, and how to run an instance of Apollo Server. And you need to have Node.js for this. So it looks like step one, we have to create a new project. So I'll bring up my terminal. I'll cd into my desktop for where this folder will be located, and I'll create a new folder, GraphQL server example, and then CD into it. Great, so I'm there. And then we can actually open it up in our VS Code or any code editor. Great, and then we can bring up the terminal here so it'll be easier to work with. Great, and then we can init the package manager. So we can just copy this and it looks like they're using NPM for this. Great, so now we have this package.json. Let me move up here. So now we have to do step two and install dependencies. So it looks like there's two of them, GraphQL, that allows us to use the logic for parsing it and executing the algorithms, and then Apollo Server. So we can copy this and install all the dependencies. Great. So now we see that both of these are installed and then our node modules is created. Now we can set up with TypeScript. So we can uh, create a SRC directory with an empty index.ts file. So we can copy this, run it. And we can see here we have a source directory and then the index.ts that got created. And now we can install the dependencies for TypeScript. So we can just copy this. Great, so now we see that these two got installed. Now we can create a tsconfig.json. And now we can see here that this is created. And inside of it, we can just copy this into it. Great. And now we have to replace the scripts in our package.json to configure to TypeScript. So we see it added a type module here. So above the scripts, we can add it. And then copy this part to the scripts. And then it explains it here that the start, so we run npm run compile and it will compile your code into JavaScript and then node to run the compiled code that we have here in index dot um, index dot ts when it gets compiled. So now you can run npm start. So now we're hitting this command. And then this this got uh, created with the index.js. Great. So we can see here that this matched up to here, and then this matched up to here. 
Great, now we define your GraphQL schema. So it says open your index.ts file. And then this is what we put in. So we imported um, the Apollo server and stand start standalone server that aren't being used yet. But the main part here is the types. So a schema is a collection of type definitions, which they call type devs here. And we see here that they use backticks and the hashtag indicates a comment. So this isn't being read. And now there's one type we have here called book. And just think of it as an object, a book object, and it has a title with a, that takes in a string, an author, not takes in, that, that is a string, and then an author that is also a string. So that defines the object of it or the type of it. And now there's the query type, and that is all the possible queries we can do for this. So for the query type, we have one for books and that will return an array of book here. So now we can move on to step four and define your data set. So this will be our books that we have for this app. Usually you would wanna create your own database for this, but in this case, we're gonna use it in memory by having it in our server. So we create, copy this, and we can paste it here. The main thing to note is that this book type is what this is. We see how this has title, this has title, author, author, and the strings are what these objects have. Now we define a resolver. So a resolver explains how we use that data set when executing a query. So we can just copy this. And basically we'll have a query here for books and it's gonna return books. So this query is one type and this books is this books and it's gonna return th this books. So I know the names of the books and the books are the same, but this is actually indicating this part. And then this books being returned is this array of books we have here. And then this array of books return has to match this type that we define up here. Now we can create an instance of Apollo server. So we can copy this. And now we create a server and it creates a new Apollo server that takes in type devs and resolvers. So type devs are the types here and resolvers are here. And now we create an express app using this um, start standalone server that we have up here. So this new Apollo server comes from here, start standalone server is here and we'll have a port 4,000 for it. Now we can start it. So we can copy here and run this in, in our terminal. Great, so now we see it's available at localhost 4,000. So we can bring this up. And now we can execute your first query. So visit localhost 4000. So that's where um, this is. And then we can run this query. So we can copy this into here and then get books. And this is what we get. And we see here, here that it matches. 
so this, that's pretty much the first introduction to Apollo Server, but let me go into a little bit more detail of this. So we see here that we just copy into here, but there's a better way to do this if, <laughs> if it wasn't given to us. So we can delete it. And we can see here that there's a query here that we can do. So we can click plus. And now we can see here that it, we have a books query. So we can click plus here. And now we have to define what we want to get returned. So previously we returned title and author. So we can click on both. And then that's what we get back. Or we can just click on author. So I, by unclicking title. And now we should only see the author here. And same thing with title. We can just see title as well. So this right side shows us the response. The middle part is what we run. And the left side is like documentation autocomplete to help us write our queries. So to help visualize how the data is moving, we can look at this. So on the front end, we have our request here. And our front end wants to get all the books we have in our server. So we make a request here to the books and it hits our Apollo server and then it hits our resolvers. And then our resolvers matches the types of what we have and looks and gets the data from a database to be returned back. And more specifically, we're making a query here, the color is red. So it goes to Apollo server and hits the resolvers and it matches the red here. It looks for a query. And then it looks for books here. So these, the colors have to match, whatever you put in the colors have to match. And then it returns book and it's this type. So it goes to our database and it has this array of books. So this array of objects has to match this type. And also what we get returned from our search has to match what we have available and it gets returned back. So that's how you visualize it. And to bring it back to it with the code, we make that request, it hits our server, and then it hits our resolvers, and it sees that it's a query, and then it's a book. And then we want to return books that we have, and we want to make sure that these books from our database or memory matches this type, and that's what you get back. So that's our very first lesson on Apollo Server. I created a GitHub repo of this code and diagram, so you can follow it in the description below. Thank you so much.